African countries have been struggling to get COVID vaccines. And when they do, not every shot is always used. In May, Malawi and South Sudan had to destroy thousands of AstraZeneca doses after they expired. And not everyone wants to get the jab. There are some who think that this vaccine will make them important. There are some who still believe that these vaccines will either kill them quick. So uh, it's a big challenge to us. Not everyone is convinced COVID is real, despite the news. Some say the risks are exaggerated. And then there's the legacy of unethical medical research on the continent that has left many wary of Western medicine. About 2% of the African population has been fully vaccinated against COVID so far. Vaccine access is the biggest problem. Skepticism is also a challenge. Here's our correspondent Adrian Krisch reporting from Malawi. People are lining up again outside the vaccination centres in Blantyre. There's been a new vaccine delivery. And because case numbers have been increasing in recent weeks, so has people's willingness to get jabbed. Compare that to just a few months ago, when Malawi had to incinerate almost 20,000 unused AstraZeneca doses that had passed their expiry date. Vaccine hesitancy is still widespread, even right outside one of the vaccination centres. In fact, I'm on a high risk because uh, um, we are operating our business within here at Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital. Because, uh, and I remember that I've been feeling some headache for the past three, four months. But uh, I just uh, pray unto the mighty God. Some other people, they were saying that there were some other side effects of the vaccine. So, in fact, I decided to wait and see first before I get vaccinated. No, at the moment I, I, I'm not ready to get it. Uh, the reason is because uh, there has been so much rumors about the COVID, the COVID vaccine. So right now I'm not sure whether to do to go for it or not. What kind of rumors? Uh, the negative, like you know, we're gonna die after some t after two years. They are going to sterilize us, stuff like that. And where did you get these kind of rumors? Uh, on the social media. Yeah. But medical experts are hopeful that vaccine scepticism will eventually be overcome on the continent. As the higher percentage of your population get vaccinated, less the, the, hes the hesitancy decrease because people can see that other people that have been vaccinated, yeah, they, they are OK. I don't expect in South Africa to have a big problem because we had very severe wave and people tend to want to be vaccinated when they have seen the severity of the, the infections. For other countries that didn't have severe infections rates, yeah, maybe a little bit more skepticism. Back in Blantyre, many of those waiting for their vaccine are also optimistic that people will eventually accept that the jab is in their best interest. I'm not worried. I'm feeling comfortable just because I get the protection. COVID vaccine is there to protect people. It's not there to kill people. In fact, uh, uh, the authorities, what it's about to do is to sensitize people. Go in the villages, have some communal meeting, tell them the truth of what is there. Because um, sometimes, you know, the social media is the one that is peddling a lot of lies. But there's still a lot of convincing to be done. Fewer than 1% of all Malawians are fully vaccinated. Charles Wisonga is director of the South African Cochrane Centre at the South African Medical Research Council in Cape Town. What's your explanation for the fact that only 2% of Africans are fully vaccinated against COVID? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ben, for having me. I'm happy to know that I'm part of the 2%. I got my COVID-19 vaccination because I know that it is the right thing to do. Congratulations. I think access to... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not everybody in Africa has that luxury because mm -hmm. access to COVID-19 vaccines in Africa is still a big issue in many countries. When you say it's, uh, it's the biggest challenge, how much is hesitancy playing a part in scepticism? As we heard in that report, uh, whether or not the Africans have access to this vaccine, it it's then comes down to a choice of whether or not they're going to take it. And, and that choice is sometimes based on social media, as we heard. Yeah, there's a lot of rumor going on on social media. So vaccines are a, a great uh, asset and vaccination saves lives. But vaccines would only save lives if people take them, if they are taken up. 
And we have seen that while access is a big problem in Africa and most countries, that uh, vaccine hesitancy is also a major challenge. In various surveys that have been done in, in Africa, you see the proportion of people who say that they are uncertain whether they will take the vaccine or they will, uh, or those who already say that they will not take it. It varies somewhere between 50% and maybe 15% in depending on the country, and at times it changes from time to time. In one study that we've just done in, uh, in South Africa, we, a national study, we found that 14% of people said that they will not take the vaccine. About 6% are not sure whether they will take or not. And about 6% said they might likely refuse, and 18% are unsure. So quite a light proportion of people who have various degrees of indecision and uncertainty about COVID-19 vaccines. And that would make us not to achieve herd immunity if we only go with the people who are now accepting. So we still have quite a lot to do. You can't blame Africans, though, can you? I mean, um, this sentiment is based on the tradition of vaccines having been tested in the West and then given to Africans, minus the research in Africa. Yeah, I think I agree with you. You know, in addition to that, you know, when let me just take one example. There was in about April last year, when there was a, a discussion on uh, in one French television, there were some scientists, some doctors, I hope, who were saying that uh, vaccinations should be tested in Africa because Africans will not have access to masks. When you have such derogatory um, remarks, then you would understand why people are skeptical about the West. And there have been some studies, uh, some uh, research scandals in, in either in Africa or related to people of African descent. So you would understand that people can be skeptical, but that does not justify the fact that when uh, facts are presented to people, they should refuse them. So how do you convince uh, the hesitant or undecided parts of the population? Because here we have a vaccine that's been proven to work. Um, I know I just got my antibody test done recently and I've got a super response. <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. So, so, so what, what, what do you say to people? I mean, besides the positive reports you get from people like me or you, how do you convince people to take the jab? I think those positive uh, stories are very important that people can see because of the various rumors they've heard that there are people who have taken them and they are healthy and the, the risk of getting the disease is now low. And when you get information about places where people have been vaccinated and the rate of disease has gone down and people who are getting severe disease, there are only very, very few of them. While in places where the vaccination rate is not high, you still continue to have a lot of cases and people are dying, they are getting hospitalized. Giving that information is, is, is important. And also, it would also be important. There are some influential people in society, faith-based organizations, religious leaders. They tend to be uh, nurses that people go to, doctors in the, in the people's local communities. I think we used to, we need to have such uh, local champions who can exactly. uh, spread the news to people, give the facts, develop vaccine, uh, you know, vaccine hesitancy sometimes comes because people don't understand a lot mm -hmm. about vaccines because of these rumors. So if we can increase vaccine literacy, give the right information, use the right people to give the information, have uh, venues within communities where people can go to for information, also enlighten the local authorities, give them the information so that they can speak with an authoritative voice. Charles Wisonga, director of the South African Cochrane Centre. Sorry, I'll have to leave it there. Thanks for talking to us today. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, have a nice day. Over to Derek now, DW science correspondent has been looking into your questions on the coronavirus. What is the immunological status of people who've had COVID-19 compared to those who've been vaccinated? In most countries, including here in Germany, authorities are treating people who've been vaccinated and people who've recovered from the disease as pretty much the same when it comes to drafting COVID regulations and measures. But of course, in immunological terms, they aren't. Um, however, 
Because the course of the disease is unique in every patient who contracts the virus, um, just look at the range of possible disease severity. Uh, actually trying to, to quantify immunological status in previously infected patients is a really tricky task. Um, with other diseases, experts say, immunity acquired through infection is often more robust than that acquired through vaccination. But that isn't a blanket rule. Um, tetanus vaccines, for example, provide longer and more powerful immunity to the disease than infection with the bacteria does. Um, and increasingly, the evidence indicates that, as Anthony Fauci said back in May, COVID-19 vaccines provoke a better immune response than the one provoked by infection. That's underlined, for example, by a recent media statement released by the CDC in the U.S., which drew on data from a study involving people in the state of Kentucky. Um, it found that those who'd been infected and didn't get vaccinated afterwards, that they were more than twice as likely to be reinfected as someone who did. Put simply, uh, the vaccine really improved protection even in those who'd already been infected and probably thought that they didn't need it, which is why many national authorities say you should get vaccinated even if you had COVID-19 and recovered. Stay safe.